Good morning, it is hunting season, finally! Today, we're gonna talk about where to shoot a deer because I sent out this survey to you guys and I asked where would you aim if you were shooting this deer and the results were so varied. I was shocked at how much variation and where some of those shots are going. And so today we're gonna to talk about the three shots that I think have the most validity for shooting a deer and exactly where were they are. We're gonna talk about the anatomy and some of the bone structure things that I didn't understand until recently and why I no longer aim here, the kind of the traditional shot. Instead, I've finally been convinced to move to that high shoulder shot. I've done it on several hunts and it's just working really well. And so let's dive into it. The high shoulder shot is where you're going up the front leg of the deer, maybe slightly forward, and just right barely on the lower side of that spinal column. For me, I would put the high shoulder shot right here. And we're gonna dive into the vitals in just a second, but first let's actually see some video of what a high shoulder shot looks like on an actual deer. So this is from a hunt in Mexico, and you'll see it's just like, it almost looks comical the way the deer dies. I mean, you shoot it and it's just like, nope, oh, I'm dead, I quit, it's over, right? You got me. Um, it's just amazing how it instantly it shuts off the lights there. Just a couple of weeks ago in Northern Utah, hunting with my kids, I took a shot at a doe, pretty far shot, and it absolutely anchored that deer immediately. Another shot on a, on a doe that same week, high shoulder shot, absolutely anchors the deer immediately. That is incredibly lethal of a shot if you understand the anatomy. As you can see from the survey, you can see several people are going for a high shoulder shot, but there's pretty broad variance on exactly where that goes. Now, that doesn't mean that a lot of these or all of them wouldn't kill the deer. They probably would, but let's just investigate to see where the best spot is to take that. So we'll look at the, at the anatomy here of the deer. A little bit forward from the center of the leg and then straight up about three quarters of the way. On the actual deer, you might see a little bulge of, of the fur there where that, that scapula is. And I wanna put it just on the lower side of the spine um, there. Now, the reason I'm kind of aiming a little bit low on that lower side of the spine is because I wanna give myself a tiny bit of margin for error because obviously you don't wanna shoot it through the, the back strap there. Um, that's where this shot can, can become non-lethal is if you, if you miss too high, you just shooting your back strap out and, and you're not going to kill the deer. But if you miss low, you have a huge margin of error. You miss to the right, you have a huge margin of error. And because the spine is mostly horizontal, if there's some wind one way or the other, no problem at all. The only thing you don't wanna do is miss high. And, and if that does happen, it's not gonna mortally wound the deer, it's probably gonna survive and be fine. So ethically, this is a really cool shot. Plus, there's very little meat damage on a high shoulder shot. But the high shoulder shot definitely isn't a panacea, and there are some times that I think it's the wrong way to go. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but first, today's video sponsor is a great tool for hunting called Mock Wheel. Mock Wheel is a super rugged e-bike for the outdoors. This one is perfect for hunting. This new version of the Basalt comes with Veil Camo on it. They also give you a spot here that you can put a quarter, your pack strapped down to it with a hard tail so that you have that ruggedness here. Has super fat tires for being in the back country, your headlight, a 750 watt motor, and you can go 60 to 80 miles absolutely silently through the mountains to find your game. Plus it has a color screen up here so you can see. It works with two different ways. First is the pedal assist. It has torque sensors, so it's seeing how much effort you're putting into it and then adds to it so it feels more natural um, of a pedal. Or you have cheat mode, which is basically just turning this thing into a dirt bike where you just press the button and go. Now when you do, you are set to go as, as far as you want. Check it out at mockwheel.com. Next, let's go to the heart shot. 
The hard shot is lower in the cavity of the chest and just barely behind that, that front leg. It's a great place to go because obviously if you hit the heart, I mean, we're gonna cause a massive amount of blood loss. But anecdotally, every time I see a heart shot deer, not every time, most of the time I see a heart shot deer, they absolutely sprint. There's just something about a heart shot deer that they run like crazy. Um, and the, they usually won't make it very far, maybe 20 yards, but they will sprint. And sometimes that can be a problem. You know, what if you're, uh, you know, shooting sheep or something like that and you're on a cliff edge and you need to anchor it right where it is, or if you don't want it to get into wa water, run onto the neighbor's property, things like that. You got to really think about what, what that deer is going to do probably after it is shot. The problem with the heart shot is two in my mind. One, if you go barely too low, you're just skimming the brisket and that deer's not gonna die. Two is because the lungs kind of angle up toward the spine, you have very little margin for error if you were to hit a few inches back from the heart, suddenly you're in a non-vital zone. And so I generally don't love aiming directly for the heart because of that horizontal doesn't give you very much forgiveness. Moving to the traditional shot, you have the most forgiveness overall. If you're taking a shot that you know is going to be difficult, you're not in a good, you're not in a very good position, you need to hurry a lot, or perhaps you're shooting at longer distances, I really think the traditional shot gives you the biggest overall margin for error. You can miss quite a bit. And so for the traditional shot, the biggest thing to me is the vertical. I would go halfway up the deer and maybe just a skosh lower than that, and then just right in that crease. What we don't wanna do is make sure that that shot does not get too far back. Too far forward, we're into the neck and there's still a chance we can get things. There's also a lot of bone. But if you go too far back, it is devastatingly bad because obviously we're just gonna hit guts there and that deer may die, may survive, but it's not going to be a good death. And so if you're going for that traditional shot, just make sure we keep it full. The other problem with the traditional shot is it has a very high likelihood of major meat damage. Now, if you get it far back enough, uh, you're probably just gonna hit through, you know, a couple ribs, no big deal, and you did great. But if you are to miss a tiny bit forward on that deer, and we punch a shot straight through that big quarter or both quarters on both sides, you could lose a huge amount of meat. And so just be careful on that shot placement. So of those three shots, 56% of you say you're going for that traditional double lung shot. 27% say they go for the heart shot and only 8% of backfire listeners, and this is with 27,000 votes, only 8% are going for that high shoulder shot. That makes sense to me because that's kind of what's always been taught is just that traditional shot that's very lethal. But I, I really would like to see more people try the high shoulder shot because at least my experience has been awesome with it so far. Now, all of this is well and good. You can look at the vitals, get it, perfect. That's where we're gonna shoot. And sometimes you, have, you can wait for a deer to provide you that perfect shot. But a lot of times the deer will not cooperate and has turned some other way. Look how drastically the view of the vitals changes going from a broadside shot to a quartering two shot. All the angles are different. And so it helps me to think about a deer really as a 3D object and picturing the, the vitals, those lungs in the middle there as we spin. If we're faced with a frontal shot like this, sometimes there are different things that I think uh, would be very vital shots. So for example, I think I spotted this deer in West Virginia or Tennessee one day uh, near the road and I just took a, a picture of him. And on this shot, you know, he's kind of angled weird. And so on this, I might go to something that some people do called the V shot. So that leg bone that comes and makes this V in the front, if you shoot right on that knuckle, I don't like it when, it when it's broadside. Some people go for that even when it's broadside. I, to me, that's not super vital of a shot. 
But when the deer is angled too, I mean, you're definitely going to be getting into vitals. You're going to be taking their wheels out and spreading more shrapnel throughout, uh, throughout the body. To me, that is a super lethal shot is going for that V shot or certainly a high shoulder. But now you have to really think. You want to make sure you're not skimming to the side of that spine that we really do anchor into it. So you got to really think about where exactly that shot would be. So do this for me. It's hunting season just starting up. What I'm interested in is if, you know, take whatever shot you, you feel is best after looking at those vitals and really analyzing where exactly you want to put those shots. And I'd love to see more people trying out the high shoulder shot, but I want to get like more information on people that are trying the traditional versus heart shot versus the high shoulder shot or others. And I want to see on average, which one is the most lethal and is working for you guys. So I'm going to do a survey at the end of this hunting season, you know, well, it's different for every state, you know, some go well into January, February kind of time point. Uh, but I'm going to do the survey, you know, maybe mid November, December, and I'm going to ask everybody, you know, where exactly you aimed and what exactly happened? How many, how many seconds did it take that deer to die? Um, because I think it'd be really cool for us to get kind of more information on which shot works best with the many thousands of you guys who watch, watch the channel. Last thing I just want to send you with is where not to aim. Just think about that more than anything else, more than specifically where do we go is where do we want to make sure that bullet doesn't go. And if that deer drops down super fast with that high shoulder shot, stay on the gun and make sure that it didn't just get stunned um, and it could try to stand up again. Hey, good luck in this hunting season. Looking forward to seeing some videos of your kill shots and photos. We'll see you guys in the next video.